What's up, YouTube? This your main man, ABD Hero, back again with a, another video. And it seems like the NCAA is finally coming around. And to me, at least, the president of the NCAA, Mark Emmerich, seems to be co signing LeVar Ball's JBA, Junior Basketball Association. Let's check it out. So, here, what I want y'all to see here is, first of all, we're going to watch this video. And uh, this video is from ESPN's Carrie Champion, right? It's her, she's on Sports Nation. And in this video, she kind of, uh, she briefly, she shows a clip from the uh, NCAA president, Mark um, Emirate, and then she kind of gives her recap afterwards and then so what we'll do is we'll listen to him she'll talk and then I'll kind of talk about how I feel about what both of them said so let's get this going there needs to be uh, the ability for a young person and in, in his family to say you know I, what I really want to do is just become a professional ball player and they ought to be provided that opportunity uh, if they don't want to go to college. If they do want to go to college, I think that's an extraordinary opportunity. They they get to pursue the sport they love. They get to potentially wind up in a venue like this one. Uh, and they get all of, the, all of the things that come with being part of an educational experience and that's extraordinary, extraordinarily worthwhile. <laughs> On the surface, it seems reasonable. If you don't want to go to college, here's a league that's not the pros, but you can develop and get paid. Not necessarily the G League, but perhaps a level below. But here's an even more reasonable question to his suggestion. Why does a young person in the United States of America have to choose between getting paid and getting an education? At 18 years old, just think about that for a moment. If these young people learn that they're not good enough for the pros, and most are not, then they don't even have some form of free education to fall back on. Where does that put them in society when it's all said and done? Perhaps this commission on college basketball will have an answer for that. But I ask at the end of the day, why can't you just pay these student athletes? You make billions of dollars because of them and you are a nonprofit organization. The president says if the players got paid, well, that would encourage them not to follow the rules. The rules. Think about that for a moment. The NCAA following the rules. All right. So now, like I said, I, I agree with and disagree with some points from both of them. I do think there would be a great opportunity to have an alternative to the NBA, an alternative to um, the NCAA and the G League, a place that where if you graduate high school and you don't feel like, yo, I want to go to college right now and, and chase an education and a degree. I really want to focus on this opportunity while I have all of my physical abilities and I want to try to be a professional athlete, but you don't have what it takes to go to the NBA. I do think it would be beneficial to have a league like the JBA where a kid can go and develop, develop into not only um, his game, but also on how to be a professional athlete, right? Um, I, I think it's, it's just like back in the day when with music, if you wanted to be a singer, you had um, the artist development, right? I think having that stage for athletes would be dope. In every other sport, almost besides basketball and football, they've got some type of intermediate uh, stage. You look at all the different leagues or double A and single A's of baseball. Um, just throughout the gamut, there's also all of these other alternatives to going to college and then also going to the major professional league because a lot of people not cut out for college, a lot of people not cut out for that. Now, what she said, his excuse of like, oh, we can't pay these players because it, it may ruin the college experiences or they may not be able to follow the rules if you give money. To me, I think that that's bullshit. My suggestion for colleges I, I can understand the ideal of like not paying the players and like giving them a scholarship free room and board and all of that and having that be their like income right you know what I mean if you go to college and, and you work in their science department and they're creating this amazing technology the kids who worked at um the University of Florida who uh created Gatorade they're not like the CEOs of Gatorade right 
So I, I understand like that exploit it's exploitation, but you know what I mean? That that is exploitation across the board when it comes to college. Where I think that the misstep is that you can't make money off your own likeness if you're playing professional sports. If you're researching um on the science behind Gatorade, then you go out and on the side get an internship with another company doing science behind drink. Like they're not gonna be like, yo, you gotta lose your scholarship because you got a full time job somewhere else. Nah, you can do both. So I think that there's a market for and especially in if you think about this, and I played ball at a relatively I played D1 ball at, at Iowa State, which Iowa State Big 12, that's a decent school. In Iowa, it's only two sports teams, really only two football teams. So it's Iowa, Iowa State. So for me, who was not like the star player on the team, there would have been opportunity for me to leverage my likeness to make some money. Now, when you look at these players who are on a team like Duke, yes, you might have the the top player on that team who may be able to make more money than the guy who's on the end of the bench, but the opportunities for all of those players to leverage their likeness, to me, is is something that they should be able to do. At least if you, and also because all of these different players don't have the same entrepreneurial spirit. So once you allow them to make moves in the free market, you'll begin to see that maybe some of the players who talent-wise on the court will not make as much money off the court because they don't have the ability to maneuver and get that bread like that. And also when it comes to what Carrie Champion had to say about this, she lost me because Right now, today, there's kids all over the nation who are deciding between a job and college, right? Um, it, that that's, that's part of the plight of everybody can't, even if you got a free education at times, you still got to um, be able to afford a place to stay, afford a place to live. That's kind of the plight of, of these college athletes. They have a free education, but a lot of them are hungry. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're in these smaller programs. Uh, you have these bigger programs like the Alabamas and stuff, and they got cafeterias and training tables and all of that. But you got some of these smaller programs, even when you go to these junior colleges, who will offer you books and tuition, but you still got to come up with room and board, food, and all these other things. And so that that right there, to me, is is not a good reason to say... Yeah, the open market. Um, it's not a good reason for um, students to be paid is because you shouldn't be able to choose. To me, if you decide, you turn 18 and you say, look, I want to be a professional athlete and you chase basketball and you go out and it doesn't work out, I think that you then have to be able to say, all right, if I want to go to college now, what I need to do is get my head in these books. And I need to try to get me an academic scholarship because just because you can't play basketball in college or a sport in college anymore doesn't mean you can't go get that diploma. I've got family members who've been 50, 60 years old when they first got their diploma. So that narrative that, yo, if you can't play basketball in college, then you can't go to me is kind of ridiculous. But so like I'm saying, I co-signed this JBA thing. I think that this will provide youth with a great opportunity, especially when I heard um, LeVar talk about how, you know, if you are a guy who comes into the JBA, you have outstanding character and you're working hard and, and for some reason you don't get an opportunity to continue into playing pro basketball, they may find, they're going to try to find you a spot uh, in inside the big baller brand company or with one of its affiliates or something like that. I think that the big thing that I think that the JBA can offer um, players that college can't, especially in, in college can't, but when you are a college athlete, there's it's very hard to be a student athlete and then also get real world experience that's going to prepare you for once you get out of college if you don't go pro. It's the setup. You can have the degree, but most kids who are focused on trying to play pro ball who are in college are not taking the internships and not taking the classes necessary in order to really, really secure a, a job or what many would call a future outside of um, college and that sport that they're playing. Uh, 
So as we know, the JBA has started holding trials. They had a trial in Seattle and a trial in um, L.A. And I want to say in Seattle, they walked away with four players. In L.A., they walked away with seven. Um, here, we're going to talk about some of those players real quick. Um, Fresh Sports, I don't know if y'all check him out. Uh, he got a website, Fresh freshsportstalk.com go check him out he's been interviewing uh some of these players and he's wrote some uh, pretty good articles man and, uh, about each one of these guys and if you can see he's he's got a interview with a few players who have made the teams and also uh, a player or two who are are getting ready to try out man so i want to kind of go through some of those stories um there is a kid who I, I was hoping he had an article from, but he doesn't have one yet. This dude, Greg Floyd, who was the four-star recruit who signed with the Big Baller brand. 6'10", four-star recruit on ESPN. I think some sites had him at a three-star. Uh, but from from what I heard, he dominated in that L.A. tryout. Uh, 6'10", dude, you see he can shoot the three. He can, he can play ball. But let's look at some of this. So... Um, I looked through, read through these, and, and I suggest you go read some of these articles because they're really good. But I wanted to highlight a couple of things that I felt like were, were pretty interesting. This first article here is um, about a kid, Niles Malone, who was on the uh, L.A. Uh, big baller team. And you see the, the headline here is um, the JBA brought happiness back to Niles Malone's life. And, and that... That's a strong statement there to make. Um, and so in this article, man, there's this part here where uh, he talks about battling depression and all of that stuff. I, I think that that's an underrated thing that people real, don't realize is with sports, you sports a lot of times become your identity. So when you don't have those sports, like you, you struggle with a lot of identity issues of what to do now. Because a lot of folks, a lot of folks who play sports, like, have that dream, I want to be a professional athlete someday. And when that is no longer reality, like, it's hard to figure out, okay, so now what do I do? Um, let's check this out. But this thing here is is what I felt like is dope. And this is what a lot of kids need in order to, to help them get pushed to that next level. This one line. He um talked about, he, he just pulled up on, he's from like Oakland or something, yeah, Oakland, California, and they went to this uh, L.A. trial, which was six hours away, but he said his family was already in Las Vegas for the weekend, so they drove over to L.A. for the tryout, and he said, um, they had nothing but confidence and faith in me, so I ran with it, right? So you got a kid who's talking about battling with depression and all of this stuff, gets the opportunity of a lifetime, and and what kicks him over and, and gives him the inspiration and courage to seize this opportunity is the confidence and the faith that his family has in him. You know what I mean? So, and, and I, I wanted, and I, I like, this, I wanted to do this video because to me, this, what we're about to talk about is like the inspiration behind this channel. Is like there are kids out there who who are battling with this, who have seem like their opportunities are gone, and it's going to take like people like me and you to be able to instill that confidence, to have confidence and faith in them, in order to push them forward to to be able to seize these opportunities. Um, here, this is a uh, all right. Brandon Abi Abuyo, I, I can't, you know, no, I, I'm terrible with these names, but, uh, so he is an article about this kid, and, and I want to say what was, stood out to me about this is, is once again here, Brandon, this kid was actually in college, and so he was attending Orange Coast College in the fall, but had to leave due to struggles with balancing school practice on top of that, a full-time job. So it's just like when Carrie Champion is talking about, oh, kids should not have to decide between a job and an education. There are kids who are making that decision every day and, and they're choosing to, to have to drop out of school right now to go chase this job, right? Or there are kids who are choosing to go to school, but they're not being able to eat. And it's, it's tough to to literally be able to to be in school, 
to study and all of that and then not have the, the physiological needs met um, that you need to be successful in that. So I just think that this JBA League, when you really think about it and you hear some of these kids' stories, it's providing much more to like the community than just an opportunity to chase a professional career, right? You've got these kids who he wants to play basketball, right? But he feels like the only way to get to the NBA or professional basketball is to go through college, right? And he can't spend time working on this game because he got to balance school, practice, full-time job and all of that. So what's the how much chance does he have to to make it to the NBA when he's also trying to get his grades up, also trying to pay for school, also trying to live and all of that stuff. So the JBA gives kids like this an opportunity who may be talented to say, you know what, man, let me let me make a little bit of money here, focus on my game, and hopefully I can get a chance at that next level to play professional basketball. Um, but like I said, man, check these articles out from Fresh Talk Sports. It's pretty good here. Uh, we got another article here. And this is from Josiah Cotton. About Josiah Cotton. Let me say, what made you decide to try out for the JBA League in the first place? I tried out for the JBA because throughout high school I had bad situation after bad situation that led led to me not receiving a college offer. Also, I figured that the JBA would lead to other opportunities to play professionally once I'm done playing. This is what I'm saying. So the the gateway or the barriers to entry to professional basketball right now go through college, right? Everybody is not built for that, right? Everybody is not built for the structure of high school sports, high school and then education. When you think about the things that the family dynamics that a lot of these kids, right? And, and that's the, the key thing is that we're talking about the mental capacity of children who are trying to balance the the resources that they can't can't have or don't have from their parents, social lives, school and all of this stuff, while then trying to make a decision whether or not they should chase a professional career or go to edu um get education uh straight out of high school. That is just a tough decision to make. And so when you look at these you have these kids who because of situations and he didn't go into detail with that but didn't receive a college offer so even if he's talented enough or needs a year or two to foster his to um yeah foster his talents in order to be good enough to play in the nba he doesn't have that opportunity anymore because there's no other alternatives at that point all right so you either have to be talented enough to play in the nba straight out of high school or you have to be able to have the talent and the grades to go to college and then go to be to to play there for a little bit and then go to the NBA later on. So it, there's not a lot of kids who straight out of high school have the talent and ability to walk onto an NBA court and make a team, right? And if you don't get drafted, there's not a lot of room to like sit on the bench a little bit and grow once you're in the NBA. That that just doesn't happen. All right, so let's push through some of these. Um, all right, let's see. This here is from Nick Holmes, and Nick Holmes is trying out in Houston. He is not hasn't made a team yet or not, but uh, there was something here that I thought was was super interesting. And uh, they asked him, "How do your parents feel about you going out for the JBA league?" And he says, "We had a long talk about it, and they said if this is what you want, if this is what I want to do." And if, if I want to be pro, I need to start living like a pro and revolve everything in my life around basketball, all right? To me, that that is the, the gift that I think the JBA gives these kids an opportunity to do is to be pro right now, right? Um, yes, as far as your game goes, you can develop your game in college, right? You can go to a practice with Coach Krzyzewski and all of these major um, uh, head coaches in the NCAA, and, and you can develop your game, right? But as you see, like, developing the skills to be a professional athlete is something different. And I want to say that 
from my time and my experience at playing Division One ball and I play football, like I literally talk to my head coach out outside of practice for I'll say I was there for two or three years. Well, he left, so he was there for maybe two years while I was there. In those two years, we probably had a total of ten minutes of conversation. Um, outside of practice and inside of practice because of the way that things are segmented we probably had a a total of maybe like 30 minutes of conversation with my head coach outside of practice right so like you going to college is not giving you like that direct tutelage at, that you would have from uh that you would think you would be getting from these coaches right so this ideal of the jba of of having the team these teams are pretty small and you've got mentors and you've got LeVar and all these other people who are working with you to work on your game and you're traveling the world and and becoming a professional basketball player I think is an opportunity that is that that is unmatched by by anything that's happening in the NBA and let me give you per, some some perspective here I say that when I was at college I talked to my head coach 10 minutes total outside of practice when I was being recruited now they have this thing where like there's a period where they can only contact you like once a week I remember sitting on the phone with my coach for like two hours at times talking about life and everything else when they were recruiting me once we got to campus I see him in the hallway and I'm thinking like oh it's coach we've been talking on the phone we got this relationship and it's like uh who are you so, I don't know. That's just some perspective for you. It's not all what you what is cracked up to be here. All right, so got a, a couple more here. Now this is Samaj Booker, and I told y'all I'm bad with these names, so I apologize. From the Seattle Ballers, he made the team uh, one of four players here. Um, but this this was interesting here, right? And and this this. This story triggered my like youth work. I used to work at an emergency youth shelter, so I heard hear things from kids sometimes, and it made me go, "All right, what's going on here?" So, um, this dude here, uh, when when asked about like what about his experience was was the best, um, and, and he kind of noted that Earl Watson, who was he used to play for UCLA, was a head coach um, with the Phoenix Suns. Um, was there and he, he's acting as a, he's on the selection committee and advisory board for the JBA but he was also there kind of providing some words of wisdom and some uh, mentorship to some of these players and he said that what stuck with him is I said Watson was really cool he motivated me to better myself he told me not to be average right and to me that's that's huge because when you hear somebody who's saying it touched me because he told me not to be average, right? That's the motivation for this kid is he told me that I don't have to be average. Do you, do you catch how, how like that to me points to like this kid has been through some things. So when I first read this, I was like, man, like when you start to see kids who you just saying hi to him. What's up? How you doing? How's your day? And then you hear 20 years later, they say, yo, like, uh, you remember that one time you just said hi to me? It was on the worst day of my life. I, I feel like that's the kind of, like, thing that I, I caught when I first um, heard that. And I think that it's dope that they do have professionals like um, Earl Watson, um, Ed O'Bannon, and some of these other names who are going to be acting as mentors and coaches for these kids. Because once again, these are dudes who played on these different levels, played professionally, and will be able to impart some wisdom on these kids that, that not that these college coaches can't give them, but it's not like in line with what they need to give them. Your college coach is not going to tell you about um, how to act when you got a lot of money because the college coach doesn't want you to be focused on having a lot of money because you're not going to have a lot of money while you're playing college ball. But also, I then stumbled across this article from Lonzo Wire about the Samaj Booker kid, and it kind of goes into his his uh, 
past life and and it kind of fell in line with what i suspected uh J jba C the jba seattle recruit was famous runaways stole a car when he was nine years old and they kind of go through here and recount some of the incidents in his life where he was running away from home when he was nine stole a car cops pulled him over and he says that i wasn't running away from my mom um i was running to a better place all right then continued to run away when he was 11 and where he was taken out of his house put into foster care and then uh, ran away from foster care too and has basically kind of had this troubled life since then and uh, they, they kind of talked about it um, with his coaches and his coaches just talks about um, how once you on the surface you may not be able to see it, but once you start to hear some of his story like you can see that he's not whole and like there's some there's some things that he's going to need to kind of get that inner peace and I to me man that's that's just kind of deep man and and that is just the prime example of of why this is bigger than just an opportunity to continue to play basketball this is an opportunity for some of these kids to change their stars, to change their life. They're going down this path and and this is and they're being shown and uh, given an opportunity to change, right? And so I go to this. This is why I like why I originally started kind of covering this and talking about this thing because I kept hearing people talk about um these like jello ball and 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 how uh, oh he was going to ruin his life and lavar's ruining lamello's life and lonzo wah 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 and and i just kept saying to myself man if 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 jello ball stealing something in china is going to ruin his life forever how can you tell some of these kids here that they got a chance to be something else Right. If Jello Ball, whose dad is one of the most famous guys right now in the country, um, doesn't have an opportunity to succeed in life because he stole something. How are you going to tell this kid who stole a car when he was nine years old, was in foster care and all of this, didn't get to go to college like that? Um, how are you going to convince him that he has an opportunity if Jello Ball don't got an opportunity, if Lamelo Ball, who has got whatever millions of followers on Instagram, and a Ferrari or a Lamborghini for a 16th birthday, birthday, if he's ruined his life by going to play professional ball overseas, then how can it, any of these kids, the kid who can't even afford to go to college, who was on the basketball team but got to sit out because he can't afford to to have a place to stay and have food and all of that? I feel like, to me, it's, it, it is negligence on the behalf of a lot of these media outlets in, in order to kind of vilify this situation or, or to deter LeVar or whoever from trying to follow in these footsteps. They tried to make it seem like the this the end of the world. And I think that there's so many kids watching them that if they believe that these people don't have a shot and they've got everything they've got money fame fortune all of these things that all these kids wish they had if they don't have a chance to be successful in life then i think that is it is going to hurt a lot of kids if they believe that they don't have a chance because um because they're watching these guys who they're looking up to and and the society is telling them that they already lost so uh one other thing here um, this one had just popped up actually recently, Ezekiel Crawford, um, who got an opportunity in the JBA. And uh, they asked him, what are the factors that led you to try out for the JBA League in the first place? And he said, I decided to try out for the JBA League because it's been my dream since I touched the basketball to become a pro. And this opportunity not only allows me to do that, but to take that step, that step earlier than I would have going to college. So it's the ideal of, he didn't say here, yo, and, and, and obviously he, the pinnacle of being a pro is in the NBA, but he kind of realizes that his his goal is to just be a professional. And this reminds me of that um, 
interview or the video that came out where Jeff Goodman was interviewing um, Leangelo Ball. He asked Leangelo Ball, he said, yo, um, if six months ago I would have told you that you'd be playing professional basketball in Lithuania, how would you feel? And Leangelo started like smiling. He's like, yo, I would have been excited. You would have told me I'd have been a professional basketball player six months ago. It was guaranteed. I would have taken that. And then every and then people on that video and this was uh and in, in my old situation, um, were like, yo, they obviously don't nobody dream of playing over in Lithuania. They don't have this. And I'm like, bro, they might not be saying, yo, I dream of playing overseas in Lithuania. That's my that's my lifelong goal. But the ideal of just being a professional basketball player is a dream that so many kids across this country share. And so the opportunity or the ideal that if you don't make it to the NBA, then then you have not arrived or you're terrible or you're trash. To me, like it misses me. Right? I, I feel like in effort to like hate for some reason, we tend to like try to minimize the accomplishments of other people. When I look at these two dudes over here right now, I'm playing professional basketball in Lithuania for Vitotas, a last place team. I think about how many guys I know would trade everything that they have in a bank account, will give up on, leave their girlfriend, leave their break a lease, and everything that they have to go take that opportunity. So, yes, when you got a brother who plays for the Los Angeles Lakers, when you got a million or whatever followers and your dad is hootie wop, um, playing basketball over in the LKL for the last place team may not seem like to to everybody else much of an accomplishment, but most of these dudes are still tracing the, chasing a the dream, right? If you go from the NBA and now you're in the LKL, you may say, but man, I was at the pinnacle, right? Um, I played Division One ball, then I went to go play like semi-pro ball, and I was like, yo, but it ain't the same. While other people who were on that team, and this is like, yo, I, I never thought I'd be playing ball again after college. They were way more excited to be playing than I was, and it's just an experience are different. But when you look at this kid like a Lamelo who's 16 years old and maybe one day wants to be in the NBA but has not arrived yet, the ideal of having your own shoe and being able to play professional bas basketball is a big deal. Uh, I go here where I'm not going to play this video, but... I thought this was interesting and I kind of briefly like talked about it in my last video, but this dude here, DNA Kicks, this title of this video, the biggest game of my life, playing LaMelo and LiAngelo Ball with the London Lions. This dude here uh, played for the London Lions. I don't think he's like actually on the team, but he got a shot to play with them in that London Clash game. And in this video, he kind of talks about like, his experience and how he got the opportunity to play for them and how being on the court with them and that little bit of exposure is a big deal. And and he's talking about having the, one of the greatest moments of his life and he was only expecting to maybe play a minute or two in the game and it was still such a big deal for him. And, and I just feel like a lot of kids, a lot of people, share the same kind of thought process and where where some of the things that we criticize other people for and their accomplishments and oh because you uh went undrafted you must be trash right <laughs> like it it, it kind of like baffles me how how blind people are to to like what is really happening in the world so uh I don't know. That, that's just what I wanted to talk about, man. I wanted to see uh, what y'all thought of that. And uh, so let me see what y'all got. Let's see who we're watching. We got Oh Boy, Clash Royale. What's up? Shang Yong. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I got to I to go back to English class. I cannot pronounce these names. Uh, what's up? Preach. Uh, Jody Reed. What's up? Uh Blueprint style, you back again. What's good, George King? Um, D Dragon, what's up, man? George King, what it? Yeah, 
let's say, so let's see. JBA is a new and one lead with real talent. I, see, but that's what I'm saying. That I was actually before I did this video, I was watching some uh, old clips of Professor and the Hot Sauce, and them dudes had talent. Man, I was thinking, I was like, yo, what if Levar got the Professor to go ahead and be the point guard for Vitotas right now? How how would that look? To me, that I would love to see that jump off. You know what I'm saying? Let me see here. Pull up. I was looking at that. A hot sauce, right? Hot sauce is uh, still out here with the Atlanta Hawks crossing people and dropping folks off. And I was just thinking to myself, man, what if a hot sauce still got some game? I, I, I feel like if LeVar went ahead and, and scooped up some of them old and one players and got them in that big baller brand... That would be a, a a a great look, and I, I do feel like with the the way that they're going to have these international tournaments of like maybe having a a big baller team that travels the world, like it does have a a kind of a globe trotter, a kind of an and one vibe to it for sure. Maybe it's offering financial classes and online classes for UCLA. See. That's dope right there. So not only do you get into the JBA, you you still get to take some classes at UCLA. That's pretty dope. Um, I have not listened to the Earl Watson interview on the JBA. I will check it out if somebody got a link and they want to throw it down in the description or in the comments. Man, I I would love to listen to that thing. But that's really man what I wanted to to jump in and talk about for a little bit. Like I said, man, I'm trying this new system, man, with the live stream. Uh, if y'all like it, let me know. If y'all don't, let me know. If we need to go back to doing these regular videos, uh, we we could we could make that work. I just like this, man, because it's it's a little bit. It takes some preparation to make it smooth, but it also helps like pump out content a little bit quicker. And then the ideal moving forward is to also be able to have folks on here and live stream with and, and kind of do some like on the live stream interviews and uh and stuff like that so so that's that's the the plan moving forward but man i appreciate y'all for tuning in and uh checking out the channel and, and supporting and uh we're gonna keep getting this content going that would be dope too with the n1 players yeah i i feel like that would be super fly with the n1 jokes if shoot, even if he did a JBA, a uh, big baller brand versus the N one team, like N one All Stars, that would be dope. I think it's on the RW Sports channel. All right, I'll check it out. See what that thing talking about. Sherwin Cooper, what's up, Sherwin Cooper? But yeah, man, and also, um, at the end of these, I'm gonna put the comments up like that. So you know what I'm saying? Get your name up there on the screen. You know what I'm saying? Drop some knowledge. But, uh, yep, so I'm going to get off here. It's been real. I appreciate y'all tuning in. This is your main man, A.B. the Hero. I'm out. Peace.